afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for attending our webinar series today with Parkinson's Resources of Oregon. Um, my name is Melissa Greer. I am the Education and Wellness Coordinator for Parkinson's Resources of Oregon. We are located in Portland, and we do have um, two offices, one in Eugene and one in Bend. If you are not familiar with our nonprofit organization, we offer education and support to people that are touched by Parkinson's disease. Um, and if you would like more information, my email is available. It's melissa at parkinsonsresources.org. I want to get started today because we do host these webinars um, to make education available online for people um, throughout Oregon, Washington, and really all over the world. And today we are doing something a little different, something that we've never done before, and it's pretty exciting. Before I get started, I just want to go over a few things. There is a control panel on the side, and that is an area that you can submit questions. So if you have any questions during the webinar, we will go ahead and leave some time for questions um, at the end. But some did submit questions prior to, and those um, were given to our presenter beforehand. So we do have questions already, um, but you can submit them throughout the webinar. And if you are having any technical difficulties, um, the question box is also where you'll want to submit um, um, any kind of troubles that you're having. Um, so onto our webinar today. Um, we have us today. We have um, Donna Davis with us today. She is a professor in uh, the School of Journalism and Communication um, from the University of Oregon, and she's going to be talking about. It's kind of a mouthful. Um, my avatar doesn't have Parkinson's and what we learn from people who use the virtual worlds to find support. So she's been running a, a virtual support group um, for Parkinson's, people with Parkinson's for the last seven years. And again, this is unlike anything we've ever done before. It's pretty exciting. It's new to me. I know it's going to be new to most of you as well. Um, so I ask you to just be patient. And um, Donna is going to just kind of go through this, show us this world and take us on this journey. So just kind of sit back, relax. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to submit those. Uh, we will be sending an email at the end of the webinar that will have kind of a how to have instructions if you're interested in kind of being part of this world. Um, it's pretty exciting. So I'm going to hand it over to Donna. Thanks so much. Thank you so much, Melissa, um, and it's really nice to be part of this today. Um, today I'm going to be talking about work I've been doing for the last seven years for people with Parkinson's in the virtual world called Second Life. And I do wish that, is, I love being able to see people where I can say, how many of you have ever heard of it and see how many hands go up? Um, but, and you can feel free to type that in chat. But if not, I'm going to introduce you to it. And this is a virtual world where um, people from all over the world can log in. It's a free online program. So when you, um, you can go to secondlife.com, there's a login page and a place where you can create an account. It's free. And when you do so, um, you will have an avatar that um, you can choose from a bunch of different templates to get started. And um, rather than me sit and talk to you like this, what I thought I would do is let my avatar do uh, the talking for me and uh, show you around Second Life a bit. So I'm gonna turn off my webcam for now and instead I'm gonna share my screen. So hopefully everybody can see the screen now. Um, yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So this is my um, avatar, Trady Felicimo. And if I oops, turn on the microphone um, and close up, you can see that my avatar even speaks in the virtual world. So I'm currently standing at a location that is kind of a home base for me. And um, this location is called Ethnographia Island. And Oh, I even run um, the where we have been working with an, um, through a grant from the National Science Foundation for the last three years um, with me at the University of Oregon and my colleague Tom Belstorff at UC Irvine. And um, this kind of is our landing spot in the virtual world. 
If I come out here, and I do have a bit of a saunter, you'll see the land, and of course in a virtual world, you can also decide that it needs to be daylight, and it's so dark, I'm gonna do that. So if I come up here, click on sun, make it midday, and voila, we have sunshine. <laughs> so in this virtual world, we have been, um, we've provided space for people to come in and build whatever they want. So everything that you see in this world right now has been built by the people that are part of our community. I'm also gonna do a quick check on a mini map to see if, here we go. Okay, good, nobody's here. So nobody can hear me talking. If there were people here on this island right now, and yes, of course you can fly in the virtual world as well, um, then you would be able to, uh, they would be able to hear me and we'd be talking in voice. I'm gonna introduce you to a few people very shortly and um, we'll be able to have a conversation with them. They are people from all around the world who have Parkinson's disease. One of them is Solis. Uh, is, she is a woman who was diagnosed with early onset Parkinson's. She was a fashion designer. And one of the things that she loves to do in the virtual world is she figured out how to create fashion so for people in the virtual world with that, for their avatars. So for instance, I had to purchase this suit this outfit, somebody designed it, puts it on the marketplace and sells it to avatars in the virtual world. Solus does that for role play. So all of the outfits you see on here, she has designed on her computer through design programs and brought them into the virtual world and people purchase them from her and she actually is making a decent amount of money producing costumes for people in a virtual world. And I can click on this and it animates my avatar to be knighted. Or if I click on this ball, it animates my avatar to do the knighting. So if I had the um, somebody sitting in front of me, they, I would be knighting them with a sword in my hand, which I have not attached here, but you can. So um, I will stand up, there we go. All of the things that you see around me now were built by people in the virtual world entirely. Um, there are classes that are offered to teach people how to build. We have people in our community who are amazing builders and can show you how to build. You can walk, you can fly, you can dance, you can cry, <laughs> you can um, just do about anything you could ever imagine that would happen in a virtual, in a real, in the physical world, you can also do in the virtual world. This was built by a woman who's actually deaf to represent what it, her experience as a child was, a, as a deaf child, where she told the story of always being told to bring her books and sit at the picnic table on the family picnics because nobody in her family knew how to do American Sign Language. So she grew up basically sitting under, you know, the books were the place she communicated and essentially looking at her family, it was what you see in the bubbles that kind of come and go, float in and out, are kind of representative of what language meant to her as a child because she was deaf. So um, there are also, let me fly over to the swamp here. Um, the swamp was built by a woman who is in the UK and um, she has created an, an alligator avatar. And of course, all alligators belong in the swamp. So um, her avatar usually sits here in the swamp and or she can come around here and go into her home, complete with hot tub. And so you'll see here, Eleanor Cayman Sands is that her um, author name and she's put links here to the books she has written um, as Eleanor Cayman Sands, also known in, this, in the virtual world as Daisy the Alligator, which you can see on here. And this is actually a link to her um, Amazon author page. So if I click on one of these, boot, um, you can see the little window that pops up here. Um, that means it's a live link. And if I clicked on it, it would open up her Amazon page and you could actually buy her books. 
directly from her space in Second Life. She says that she logs into her little house here, which also has a lovely view of the ocean. Most places have a lovely view of the ocean um, in the virtual world. And she logs into this house to do her writing. She calls Daisy the gator her muse. Um, she is homebound primarily, um, and but logs in here, attends events, and um, uses this space to create her environment where she actually then um, she finds that the, the way the best way for her to write. I'm also going to show you that okay it's not here I can't open the that's interesting there's no music in this space but you can also set up music let's see Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm jumping around here. Um, this is one of the residents from our um, Parkinson support group. And she sent me a text saying, am I too late? Are you still there? And I'm gonna say, hi, Mary. The um, webinar has started. Will be at the support group meeting house in about 15 minutes. Please join us. So you can text message people in a virtual world. Um, you'll see here, hopefully you can see and that it's not too small or blurry. Um, ISTE is another group I belong to. It's the Educational Technology Association. They are currently hosting um, a discussion on libraries in virtual world, then and now. If I click on the little link on this, p on this page, it will give me a landmark and who needs to walk or fly when you can teleport. So I am teleporting to a space where there is currently, oops, let me turn my, my microphone off so everybody doesn't hear me in the virtual world. Um, oops, it's a small group here today. And they're saying hello to me in the local chat. Sorry to barge in like that. And you can see these are all people sitting around together as their avatars. And some of them are librarians, or of course you can wear a kimono with green hair. And um, or you can look very young and lovely. And um, all of this is available for you to design to make yourself look exactly how you want in a virtual world. I try to make myself look as much like me as possible, although it's really difficult um, to add pounds and wrinkles without just making it look awful. So I'm a younger, thinner version of me. And I'm going to tell them also apologies for a quick departure. I'm showing people SL who are in RL, meaning the real world. So they respond to me in real time. These are real people having real conversations and I can click on any of their names and up will pop a profile. And um, so you can see that Sheila Yoshikawa is owner of InfoLit iSchool, home of Sheffield University's information school in the UK. It tells all about her. And she's telling us right now, this is a discussion group that meets weekly um, and that it's always international. I can click on her real life profile and it tells me um, how to find out more information about her on her literacy blog. Another thing I can show you right now is, as I continue to teleport, I'm gonna teleport to a live music event. And in the virtual world, 
This is not the live music event. Let me find live music. I click on events and here I can see that Savannah Rain is singing. I don't know if any of you are country music fans, but she's a country music singer. So we'll go to her live performance in the virtual world right now. And I'm giving you a super quick tour of the virtual world. Um, and we'll go talk to the folks that I work with who have Parkinson's in just a minute. So they can explain to you a little bit more about how they use the virtual world and um, their experiences with support in the virtual world. So my avatar is super laggy right now, but if I line up right, I can walk into this event. Close this. And it's really interesting. One of the people who has Parkinson's in our support community has told us that lag in the virtual world is exactly what it feels like when they're experiencing tremors in the physical world. So they, as we struggle with lag one day, they said, welcome to my world. So you can see there are quite a few avatars that are in this space right now. And if I turn on this little music symbol at the top, you'll be able to hear Savannah Rain singing live. Hopefully. Okay, allow. Always allow. Let's do it. Let's have the line. Next said I'm already drinking, but I'm not. So you can see the people are, you can click on one of these pose balls on the ground. And now my avatar is also dancing. And they all look gray right now because they're still rendering. And all of the people that are in this room right now, hopefully you can hear this. Can you hear that all right? Hopefully. And I can turn the music down a little bit. But that is actually a woman who is singing. And if I find her avatar over here, Savannah Rain Benelli, I click on her profile and it says that she sings. You can actually click on her calendar and find out when she's singing. And I click on her first life. She says, she's not 25, married. I'm not here to play with your heart or your head. Just want to have fun and enjoy meeting new people from different parts of the world. She's from the Southeastern United States. So her avatar looks like this. And she's currently the singer. And all of these people who are likely from Europe are sitting, standing here listening to her. Um, because, of course, it, it's 12 o'clock in Oregon, but it's 8 o'clock in England. It's or 9 o'clock in England, 8 o'clock in Italy. You can pick your port, part of the world, but most of these people are likely from other parts of the world. So you can meet people. You can um, direct message them. You can speak in local chat, which is what's happening in this bottom left corner. And you can come dance with a crowd of people at noon in the middle of the week. A lot of people find a lot of um, social comfort in this space. And I, I could talk to the local, the, the group here and they would all be chatting. I can see local chat right here. Okay. They're inviting me to join the group, which I'm not going to do. I'm not going to subscribe to that. Let me turn the music back down again. 
and uh -oh. Donna, I'm sorry, what does it mean to, to subscribe to a group? This is Melissa. Okay, yeah. All right, so if I wanted to um, know when Savannah was gonna be singing and come and listen to her all the time, I can probably find up here, yes. Savannah, I can tip her. Let me also turn this back up so you can hear her talking to the crowd. You singing after me here today. I hope you guys will all hang around and um and hear him after my show. How about let's do a little neon neon? Okay. As I turn I promise not to push buttons, but I did it. Uh oh. There I just turned the music off. So I can tip her right here. So if I click on this, I can tip her. It says 250 Linden, which I'm gonna do. That's actually about the equivalent of one dollar and um, in US dollars. But I can also click on the group joiner here and it'll show up as in local chat where it says, thank you for your tip. All right, no wait, subscribe. All of these things here, I can click on the group and it'll invite me to join the group or I can subscribe so I'll get notifications when she's performing, and if you have favorite musicians that you want to follow, you can listen to them that way. Um, so if I click here too on my groups, you'll see I belong to 55 groups, and they're everything from um, Digital Cultures, Ethnographia Island. Yes, I went to Florida, so I'm part of the Florida Gators fans. Um, Fran's fans, um, Fran is 92. You're gonna meet her in just a minute. She has Parkinson's and she's the woman who inspired all of this work that we've been doing. So a lot of the um, groups that I belong to are part of, so you can see there's actually a Team Fox in Second Life where they've been raising money for the Michael J. Fox Foundation um, and have done that and won all sorts of award, awards for, for doing that. Um, so these are all Zonder Nicktein fan club. This is an electric violinist from the Netherlands who plays the most extraordinary music and um, is, uh, has become a very good friend when he's performing in the virtual world that he'll send a notice out to everybody saying, I'm gonna be at this location at this time and you never miss a minute. Does that help? Yes, thank you very much. You bet. And there could be a little bit of lag, yes, because my computer is um, running the, the webinar and the virtual world all at the same time. But you can see it, it loaded relatively quickly. And um, there's, there are quite, the more the people that are in a place at one time, the, the slower everything gets too. That's just a matter of um, overloading a, a server, if you will, how many um, bits and bytes you have that runs slows your computer down. I know there was some question about um, what do you need to be able to um, participate in this. It's a, um, as I said, if you go to secondlife.com, it's a free download. Almost, and I am running this right now off of my MacBook, um, so you, it'll work on Mac or PC. And you'll see all of these lovely people from the front now, and they dress in all sorts of fashion. So um, you also notice almost everybody is young and thin and, and beautiful, um, for better or for worse. But um, as Melissa also said, I'll be um, happy to send out information on how to create an account how to and where you can go to learn how, all of the things that I'm doing in here right now, including using my voice, how to walk, how to fly, how to teleport, all of those things. So, um, and it's, there is a bit of a learning curve, but it's not, I mean, we have Fran who's 92, who's been able to do this. She's been in um, Second Life now for eight years. So, um, Rather than me talking about them, let's go ahead and actually, were there any other questions before I keep moving? And I'm gonna make sure I haven't, um, I'm gonna tell Robin to mute 
us at the support house. Heading there now. And I apologize for that. And um, likewise to Mary, who is from heading to support house now. Uh, Mary is from uh, Germany. So we have people with Parkinson's from all around the world who are part of this support group, which is um, a pretty wonderful thing. Sorry about that. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and teleport to, you'll see up at this top of the screen, I can click on one of these that says Ethnographia Island, and it'll teleport me there. Um, and I could have, should have asked uh, Savannah to sing a song, see if any of you had a country song request. She would have been happy to sing it for you. So this is where we meet as a group on the uh, island when I, we're working with the broader uh, group of people with disabilities. So um, I also have saved up at this top left, you'll see where it says Parkinson support. If I click on that, it'll take us up to this, the Parkinson support house. And hopefully, here they are. Oh. Hi, Trady. Hello, everybody. So, I, hello, Trady. Hello, hello. I'm going to sit right here. I've um, got, let's see, we have, I think, about 25 people currently logged into the webinar, and I'm sharing my screen with them so they can see you all and hear you all. And I'd like to go around the room quickly and introduce everybody. Let me start with. Um, D.B. Bailey, and um, D.B., if you want to just say um, where you are and how long you've had Parkinson's, it, it, whatever else you'd like to share about yourself personally. I'm, in, I'm a retired architect. I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, and welcome to you all. Welcome to the virtual world. And I've had Parkinson's for about 16 years. Thank you so very much. I'm going to make sure. Did everybody hear that okay on the other side? I want to make sure my volume is good for everyone. Okay, great. Um, then there's me. There's Robin is a, one of the newest members of our group. And Robin um, typically types rather than uses her voice. And um, anything you'd like to share with folks, Robin? Right. Robin does not have Parkinson's, but is a Parkinson's support, a caregiver. Her partner has Parkinson's and lives in Nebraska. Thank you, Robin. Then Dr. Limza, Mary, Dr. Mary. I to the other side, as Katie said. <laughs> I'm called from Germany, and I'm not mine, he's mine, my English is not so good as the other. I'm a veterinary on the way to retirement. I'm 56 years old, and I have Parkinson's since 10 years. Thank you very much, Mary. Um, and if I know that that was a little bit um, difficult for me to hear, so I'm sure it was for you as well. Um, she's a veteran, veterinarian, has had Parkinson's for 10 years, and lives in, and I always get this wrong, Germany or Austria? Germany. Yes, thank you so much. Okay, and then we have another extraordinary caregiver. Um, here is Barbie Alchemy, and Barbie actually started Creations for Parkinson's in Second Life, which is a group, and I'm not going to say what it is. I'm going to let you say what it is, Barbie. Barbie. 
Barbie, are you with us? Sorry, yes, I was muted. Um, yes, I'm Barbie Alchemy. I live in Southern California along with my mom, who is now 91, who's to my left. Um, our dad died with Parkinson's at 90 years old, and exactly a year after he passed away, mom was diagnosed with Parkinson's. And when my brother introduced mom and I to Second Life 10 years ago, we noticed that mom's symptoms began to improve. And as a result of that, we became very aware of how virtual reality can be beneficial to people in many ways, but especially to people that have any form of disability. And so we started Creations for Parkinson's to uh, raise awareness, education, uh, this support group. With this support group was actually mom's idea. Um, and um, also to raise money for the Michael J. Fox Foundation for Parkinson's Research. So that's what we've been doing on Second Life for close to 10 years now. And um, in one year, and I think this is maybe two years ago, how much did you raise for Michael J. Fox? Well, we have raised, a t in virtual dollars, we've raised 10 million uh, linden, which is the virtual dollars that are used in Second Life. And that's the equivalent of 40,000 US dollars for the Michael J. Fox Foundation. And I, one of the things that I think is so important is to have the world recognize that virtual reality can be used in a very positive way. That's been my mission is to uh, use, set that example so that in the future, others can see the benefits of virtual reality. Thank you so much, Barbie. And um, Barbie has done so much for so many people in Second Life through this um, Creations for Parkinson's. And I have saved Fran for last. Um, hello, Fran. Um, we're all here because of Fran. And does Fran, Fran, do you have your mic on? Mom, we're not hearing you. Make sure that your silver button is not blinking on your cord. Okay. There she is. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, I'm sorry. No worries. Not, no. Yeah, okay. I'm Barbara's mom, and I've had Parkinson for about 11 years. And this is, you know, as the, the years go, you just get weaker and weaker from it. And so much is taken away from you. So, but I'm handling and I think I'm doing okay. Yeah, I don't know how much more they can take away. I think I should be reaching that spot where they have nothing more to take away. And I'm getting very close to it. Yeah. So anyway, nice to be here. Mom, do you want to tell everybody how, how old or how young you are? I'm 91 years young. 91 years young. And, um, there is actually i'm going to cam behind barbie up on the uh, over the fireplace you see a picture of fran at the center here and um to her right on the photo it's our right not her right it, i'm standing there in the long white um blouse db is standing behind me solace the fashion designer i mentioned to you is in the middle Trey, who couldn't be with us today, um, has been a member of this group since nearly the beginning, and Barbie in the, the blue sparkly shirt. So that's all of us. We flew in from all around the country to join Fran for her 90th birthday in Southern California a couple of years ago. And it was really, it was. And I, I think one of the things, Go ahead, Fran. They came from all over. Yeah. We did. Okay. And one of the amazing things for us is that as we sat around in this the room in the physical world during her birthday, 
um, it was the first time we'd been at, sitting as a group in the physical world, but it is though we had known each other forever and it was no different than sitting together in this room right now as a group. I, I, I want to, I think that is a pretty accurate assessment. Um, and DB and Fran and Barbie were all there. It was an extraordinary experience to see people we've never seen before with voices that were so familiar. <laughs> right. Because you think about how we do sit and hear each other and in, in, in our real voices every single week. So, um, and we had one of the people that are um, listening and watching ask, um, do people in the support group assume a different identity than their real identity? I would say no. If anything, they reveal more about themselves than they might in a, in a, in a real life situation. I thought that was real life. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were real life in the photograph, but I think, um, oh, that's very interesting. Robin says that most of the time she's an eight-year-old, but very true to herself. And I think that um, it's like I said, I am a younger, thinner version of me, um, but my avatar is just me. Uh, it's the same as Donna. Trady is Donna. Donna is Trady. And um, we talk, we've talked about also the idea of having um, photorealistic um, avatars. And there's something to be said about not being looking just like our human um, in allowing ourselves to be social and to play and to get to know each other. Um, would you say that's a fair assessment as well? A lot of people. A lot of people with Parkinson's don't like going to support groups in the real world because they see people that are so much worse off and find it depressing. And here that's not an issue because we, we know each other visually through our avatars. And so that element is, is removed, which I think makes a big difference. Yeah, they are very different, I think. Well, and Mom, would you say, Mom, ahead. would you say we're different in, in Second Life, not the same in Second Life as, as personality-wise and feeling-wise? Oh, I think we're the same personality. Yeah. No, I meant we're we're a different than the the group that DB uh, was talking, speaking about, a real life group. Yeah. 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 And another question they've asked is, um, what benefits have you seen from being part of the support group and not um, and just being in Second Life, and the Second Life support group? What kind of benefits have you experienced? Loyalty. I think we're very loyal to each other. Loyalty, indeed. This is a very loving, close, group of people who've shared a lot of life together, I think, over the past seven yeah. years. I'm interested. We're really interested in each. We never run out of topics to discuss after seven years. It's amazing. Yeah. We met just this morning, and this morning, has, um, what the topic was if people have used therapy, what to what gain? Uh, last week we talked about, um, I think last week, <laughs> this is silly, I think last week's was about memory and memory issues, but I'm having a hard time remembering, which is not a joke, um, but silly. And um, so Robin's saying also, she gets so much positive support, not easy to find a local support group. That's a really great point. One of the things we hear from people often is that if they live um, rurally, or there's a lot of reasons for people to have um, live in isolation, and it's so e such easy access. You can do this any time of the day, anywhere in the world. Um, 
as long as you have an internet connection and a computer with a decent graphics card, which almost all of them do today. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, Mary? Yes, um, I am having a really hard time hearing your voice, Mary. Clearly. I said I can have an avatar and change to a million people. Yeah. Um, it's very good for me to be here to get back the identity in real life. Ah. So being able to have an avatar that represents the way you feel is a way to regain your identity in real life post Parkinson's. Is that an accurate way of summarizing what you just said? I just wanted to say that for me, being here with this group, what we have in common makes me feel like it's normal to have Parkinson's. I don't feel like I'm unique in that respect, and it's comforting. And another one of the questions we have is, what kind of things do you do in Second Life? And each of you have pretty remarkable stories about that. Also, what we do for our fundraisers, um, we hold live concerts. We, there are many remarkably talented singers in Second Life, and they normally charge to perform. But if we are doing a fundraiser, they're very generous to donate their time and talent. And so we may have anything from a two or three hour fundraiser to even up to a 12 hour fundraiser with a different singer each hour. And people from all over Second Life come to hear these singers and then donate during that fundraising event. So we have raised Sometimes we only raise maybe 50 or 100 US dollars. We've actually had a phenomenally successful event where we raised 2,000 US dollars in 12 hours. That was very unusual, but um, it's amazing things are possible here. So people do love to listen to live music and to dance to that live music. It's actually the single most popular thing to do in Second Life. I just showed them. A lot of people I, I took them to see Savannah Rain, um, who's performing live right now before we came here. So right. they I saw a whole a room full of dancing sure. people. <laughs> oh, so they did see it. Yes, they yes. They did see it, so you're yes. not asking dance. Okay. No, 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 no. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> we went to, we already did go and, and watch Savannah Rain performing live. So they got to see somebody Good. performing from the U.S. in a room full of people dancing. And speaking of dancing, Fran um, is quite the dancer in Second Life with many a beautiful ball gown. But um, tell them what else you like to do also, Fran. Mom? Yeah. What things you like to do in Second Life? Oh, okay, it's hard to understand, Shady. I get her garbled. Oh, dear. Right. Well, I like, well, this is my papers, my very papers, and I do like going to the fundraisers. And, and now I don't know many more things. Fun so so Fran, you're a party animal. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people in Second Life like to come in different forms, and there's a large community of people that are mermaids and have all their oh, experiences underwater. So here on our island, I have put all, 
I lived in an entire island size underwater, which is quite large. And we also have dance and contests down there where we have a different theme each week and people wear mermaid con contest costumes to the theme and then they can win some London dollars. So that's really fun. And we have somebody that plays the piano for that every week. And um, that's a fun event. It is beautiful under there. And and I was just, Mary just typed that for her it's to express her art and to present it. Mary, can you um, res one of the pieces of art that you've, um, that you'll be showing this afternoon? So for a lot of people, they're, they use this at a, um, as a creative expression. Um, and both Mary and DB, I would say are, DB is probably one of the most creative people in all of Second Life history. Can you can you address that as well, DB, a little bit? Well, I use uh, Second Life in a couple of different ways beyond this group. Uh, although I'm a retired architect, I still have uh, a few projects going, and I use Second Life for doing design work. It's it's. It's great to be able to design buildings in 3D as opposed to 2D on paper, and it's tremendously beneficial. And I've been able to collaborate with other architects. I collaborated on a project in uh, Cairo, in which I was in Los Angeles and the architect was in Cairo. And we would come into Second Life with our avatars and design the shopping center together, which was a terrific experience. And the other yeah. thing is I, I do a lot of art. There's been recent research that's been done that's demonstrated that a lot of people with Parkinson's have experienced a surge in creativity and that when involved in a creative activity, the symptoms are significantly reduced. And it's certainly true for me. So I spend a lot of time doing art, which uh, helps me cope with the disease. And we started out at um, the uh, at Ethnographia and showed them Solis's build there and explained to them how Solis has found her um, fashion career blossomed in Second Life after she was forced to retire. She was early onset Parkinson's and was forced to retire at a young age. And she lives in very rural California but does has an is amazing um, does an amazing amount of work in Second Life. I'm also going to read the local chat here. Um, Dr. Mary says she has her own gallery, and actually, are you? It's you're having an opening today at um, three o'clock. Is that what I heard this morning? Um, there's a very vibrant art arts community. Um, in Second Life? Oh, it's for next week. Okay, great. And can you res oh, the poster, DB? Do you have a copy of the poster that you could res? And when we say res, it, that means just it to um, bring it into the virtual world. Uh, so each of these pieces of furniture have been resed in this space. And Robin says in Second Life, she, goes, she can go to church, fly a plane, Meet friends from all over the world in a cafe, sail a boat, explore marvelous places, amazing creativity, and love. The family community is so supportive to parents, families, activities, anything imaginable. And truly, I mean, people go surfing, hang gliding, <laughs> gardening, create beautiful gardens. Oh, perfect. And Barbie says, pass the, um, the poster to Barbie and she'll res it. And Mary says, for me, it's a present to change my art across the world. Um, another question from the group is that how many people are in the PD support group? And is there more than one support, um, more than one group? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm so busy this way. I didn't want to scare you. I'm sorry. I didn't want your lunch is in your little table. Okay. okay, your macaroni, your soup, and your iced tea. Okay, okay. 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 so um, let's see, close this. 
think we're going to have lots of friends. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Um, so right now, this is the only support group. There are, if I, I, um, I can open up my um, support, my Parkinson support group group. And if I look at the information, go to members, and there are currently, um, I think about 35 members of the support group, but there's probably, um, between six and a dozen people that'll show up on any given Thursday morning at 10 when we meet. And so we've been a pretty intimate support group of people and we have become thus such close friends in that time. Um, but one of the things that we wanted to mention to you is that if you would be interested in participating in the support group, we will be providing you with information at the end of this um, session. Uh, Melissa will be getting that information out to you with a quick how-to guide, how to create um, an account. And in the last week's support group, I asked the folks that were there um, if they would be willing to mentor those of you who would have an interest in being part of the group and they would do a step-by-step -step orientation with you to help you understand how to use the program. And here Barbie has put, um, oh, so sweet. I'm sorry, this, is, this is not from either DB or Mary, they didn't pass me anything, but this is from a real life artist. Her name is Mary Sparrow and people can send her pictures of their animals and she paints them and sells them in real life. But she did pass this to me and I have sold several of her paintings to raise money for for our, uh, Parkinson's. So I, I just pulled this out of my inventory so you could see how we can res a painting and then somebody can buy it and hang it on the walls of their own home. And um, there are people that have, I know a bronze artist who built, designs bronzes, creates bron beautiful bronzes, and then creates their replica, put, brings it into the virtual world and sells them but has now found a following of people who buy his art offline for their homes as well. It's pretty remarkable. And Mary also added that for her second life is, is a little family. Um, and you feel safe here with her problems. That's another really important thing that I think we hear from everybody in our group is that it's such a safe place um, to express yourself, to share what you're going through and know that you're with people with common issues. Um, other than this SG uh, support group, maybe other groups, are there any issues that arise that a moderator to look out for inappropriate behavior? Ah, um, there are lots of other support groups. There are There's a huge depression support group that has over 5,000 members in it. There's um, support groups for people with MS, for PTSD, for you name it, there are some, there's a support group for it in Second Life and people are able to connect. All right, thank you, Robin, at Health Info Island or at Virtual Ability, which is another organization that's formed in Second Life that, um, that helps people with all types of disease and disability um, with information sessions, they host an annual conference that is entirely hosted in Second Life with internationally renowned speakers. Um, so, and in terms of inappropriate behavior, we haven't had any issue with inappropriate behavior in this group. Jiminy Christmas, Barbie, what, probably six years? I only remember one time, and that was in the very beginning, about seven years ago, um, and that was somebody trying to come in to disrupt the group because they, you know, it was like a troll or a, a griefer. Other than that, that only happened one time in seven years and has not happened since. 
um, and the, the program and the people that run the program have, um, I think, done a really excellent job of creating tools to help um, people. It's, as Robin says, the ability to ban or set privacy is important. So um, if you were to look up, if you could see it at the top of the screen, you'll see that in the, um, just above the photo over the fireplace, it says Creations Park Grown with Love. That's where we are. And um, then it says moderate. So it's a moderate sim, which means there is no nudity, no swearing. And if you um, violate those rules, you are banned from the sim. That means you can never get back in. So there are some really nice um, security features in place with the program that have really eliminated a lot of the inappropriate behavior of the early days. And Mary says she came in as an avatar, changed in here back to a human um, with the opportunity to solve real life problems um, in retirement and to get guided by people with the same circumstances. So from Germany, Mary's found a really wonderful group. And we're from California, Tennessee, Nebraska, and Oregon in this room right now. Hey, Donna, this um, is Melissa. Pardon? Um, oh, this is Melissa from okay. Parkinson's Resources. Um, yeah. One, it's so nice to meet everyone in this room. So thank you so much for joining the webinar. Um, we have a few minutes, and I was wondering if I could ask a, a question. Sure. Um, one question that we have is, on average, for someone who isn't extremely savvy at creating things online, um, and for people that are maybe still intimidated, how long do you think it t would take before a person could participate in a support group and, and talk to people? I mean, kind of what's the learning curve? Okay, the question was, um, for somebody who's never been in, about how long do you think it would take for somebody with no experience to get into the support group and be able to um, participate? And Barbie, I think you work with people that are new and DB as well. Yeah. Um, as much as in, and Robin is actually very new to Second Life. Oh, new to our group at least. Okay. Let me see. How old are you, Robin? Um, I would say just to be able to come to our group and sit here, or, or even just stand here. You don't even need to learn how to sit. We could, if you, the easiest thing is to be on the phone with somebody and just talk them through it. Um, we would just send you what's called a TP. It would show up on your screen. You click yes, and you would end up in this room. And um, that's really all you would need to do to attend this group for the first time. It takes maybe 10 or 15 minutes to learn how to do simple things like sit or walk. Um, but then to, to learn more, it, it can be as simple or as complex as you need and want. To learn, nobody ever learns everything, but whatever your interests are, that is the, you, what you will learn so you can participate in different events and activities or to create or whatever it is that's meaningful to you. By the way, wait, I wait, wait, just, Barbie? just failed. Yes, um, yes the, um, we have one minute to go, and I think that um, if, okay, if no, it's okay, Melissa, I think you said it when it goes, it goes quickly. Um, w well, we can actually go as long as we want. Um, um, as soon, yeah, so it will not end just at one o'clock. Um, okay, okay, I didn't know if we yeah. were going to get cut off at nope, one, you won't get cut off. Okay, um, so is there also any, if someone just wants to participate and and simply just be part of the support group, is there any real money that's involved? No, no money involved. It's a free account to create an avatar. Um, to use the space, it's completely free. If Because uh, we have been talking about raising money, and I showed you that I gave 250 Linden to the musician before we came here. Um, you can set up a paid account and get money, and with that money, you can buy clothes and houses and art and um, furniture and, and land. Um, and if you think about 
the um, cost of that, I always have people say, why on earth would you spend money on something that isn't real? And um, we spend money today on books that aren't, that we don't, can't put on a shelf, that we read on a Kindle. Um, we buy music that doesn't, is not on a CD or an album or a tape or anything else, that it, it, it lives in the cloud. And um, purchasing property or um, furnishings or anything else is the same as buying server space. So there's a, there's a cost that goes into um, bandwidth, if you will, or the amount of, of uh, file you want to own. And um, so you can spend money to create an account that you can then also very highly customize, or you can create a free account that's absolutely perfect um, there are places, and this is an, one of the other things that Barbie's done an amazing job at, is um, helping people who are new to the um, program to uh, find clothes that are free and places to go that are free. Um, I mean, all the places you go are free. Um, all the experiences are free. I could go and listen to Savannah Rain and not spend a penny but I'm the kind of person that feels like I've just listened to a live concert that artist deserves even a token of my appreciation, which 250 Linden is a dollar. Many of the artists that are like the musicians in Second Life now actually make a living in Second Life from people like me who give them a dollar or more as they go. Wow. And um, Robin said that it took her a few days uh, to figure out the program, but a few months to become really comfortable in it. And uh, Mary, it says, she says it took a year. She came and left, but um, she came back because she knew she could find help here, support here. Great, thank you. And I'd like to say my first six months, I didn't spend a penny. Everything I did I was free, everything you get free clothes, everything I did was free. But the more time I spent here, the more I realized I really wanted to have a home here. It was just a nesting instinct. Um, and my desires increased the more time that I had spent here to express myself. It's a matter of self-expression, truly. It's um, that's the best way to explain it. And I do want to say that Mary just passed me this piece of art, which I've just put down on the floor here. Um, so if you could see that. I do. So, and that's one of the other amazing things that you can certainly see that um, it's creativity and art in this world don't have to be in a box, if you will. <laughs> um, and if, um, if I could have shown you the places and spaces that DB created in this world, it was really, really amazing. And then just final question before we wrap up. Is what, what are your hopes for this second world or second life? Um, and, um, and just in general, but specifically with people that have Parkinson's disease, what, what do you want people to know? And what are your hopes for for this second life? Um, well, I would have an answer, but I would also like Fran and DB to answer that question. And the question being, what would your hope be for Second Life and for people with Parkinson's? That's a very good question. Um, and I'm not sure I know the answer. I don't see that. Parkinson's disease is a progressive disease, and a big part of dealing with it is the loss of abilities and being able to be a part of a group that is experiencing, having the same experience is very powerful. And I think that for us, I see us going on as long as we can keep going. And I hope that the future of this will be that more people will understand what the potential of this is and take advantage of it, and that it will improve technically and become a part of our regular lives. People will go into the virtual world for all kinds of reasons. And uh, 
I think the future for virtual worlds is, is very bright and exciting. I'd like to share something that mom has said many times, and that is that she's very grateful that she got Parkinson's because if she had not gotten Parkinson's, she wouldn't have the opportunity to be part of this group or to experience meet the people in Second Life and have the remarkable experiences that she's had. So, Mom, I don't know if you want to speak more about that, of how Second Life has uh, expanded your experiences in life. Oh, you've done a great job, Bobby. I don't know what else I could add to that. I would just add that um, Mary made the point as well that people with Parkinson's often can't sleep. So it's the ability to meet people when other people are sleeping. You can be here at any hour and connect with others. So this support group, I think, has been a wonderful, from my experience with them, because I do not have Parkinson's. I was more interested in understanding what this platform could mean um, as we talk about social media so much um, and think about Facebook and all the other ways that people connect online. This is a way where you connect as in, in a body so that you're representing a human being sharing time and space as we sit here together in this room and talk um, in a way, in a place that's safe where you can find people that have similar circumstances and share resources in a way that just doesn't happen in the physical world. And um, that, that, level of connectivity has been a real lifeline for a lot of people who do live in isolation. There are a lot of people who are very actively social with Parkinson's um, that are also actively social in, um, in both worlds. I, I mean, goodness, what, I, what DB does in the physical world <laughs> is, is really remarkable. And um, what he does in the virtual world is equally remarkable. But I have found that it's a connection with other individuals that really can't, or an ability to express oneself in creative ways where they never knew they may have had that creativity has been another extraordinary bonus for people with Parkinson's. So our hope would be, I believe, that um, there are more people that would care to join the group to be help share in that resource, help share in that connection, and that we welcome anybody who's listened to this today to reach out and we'd be more than happy to connect with you and um, help you be part of our support group. Well, thank you so much, Donna. And thank you, everyone. Part of this meeting in avatar form and not being able to see each other literally in the real world makes us listen more carefully to the words that are spoken. Such a great point. Um, as Tom has written about my colleague from UC Irvine, he's often said, um, in Second Life, we have all said this, you get to learn, get to know people from the inside out. So we're not being judged by the way we look in the physical world. Um, we're just getting to know each other by what we say and do instead of by what we look like or what we own or how pretty we are or not. <laughs> so, um, and I know I heard you try to say something, Melissa. Oh, yep. I was just going to, again, thank everyone for um, that's in not only attending this webinar, but that's in this group um, right now for sharing your stories and taking time um, join us and also to thank you, Donna. We're a bit over time, so yeah. um, if there's any other questions from this webinar, you, everyone can email me at melissa at parkinsonsresources.org. Um, if you have any other questions, I'm sure I can email Donna as well and she'd be happy to um, answer those. And yeah, thank you so much and thank you, thank you for sharing your avatar. Oh, thank you so very much. It's been a pleasure. All right. Thank well, you so very much. It's been a pleasure. And thank you, everybody, again, for being here today both in both worlds. Yes, thank you. This is going to conclude our webinar broadcast, but please stay tuned for our next webinar, which will be on October 24th. I'm talking about when you can't make 
make the decisions, who will? Um, again, Donna, thank you so much. And thank you so much um, to the Parkinson's support group as well. My pleasure. Thank, thank you. you. Have a great day, everyone. Take care. Yeah, thank you. Come on over to the other side. Bye-bye. <laughs>